Hey Paul, could you take a look at DS Smith? It's a FTSE 100 company. It's a very unsexy packaging company, but moving forward is ESG and sales internationally. Sounds like my sort of company. Let's take a look. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. Okay, so DS Smith is a packaging company. I'm assuming it's sort of cardboard boxes and all that sort of thing. I don't know a ton about it. I'm not going to go into a ton on its ESG today, but it is going into a lot of recycling and paper. It's really pushing this. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to call it greenwashing, but it, it definitely could be. It's definitely its marketing plan going forward with DS Smith, but it is expanding to US markets and it is expanding globally. So this is an interesting company, especially for a FTSE 100 company. We need some companies in the FTSE 100 to start expanding globally and start using a bit of technology. Currently, DS Smith has a market cap of 8.03 billion dollars, which is probably about seven billion pounds. Let me just check that to be sure. Uh, nope, it's 5.7 billion. PE ratio of 13 and a very, very tiny dividend. Bit of a choppy earnings growth recently for DS Smith. 75512, that was really good. Minus three, minus two, minus 22. And uh, earnings are expected to grow 25% and 17% respectively going forward. Uh, overall adjusted operating earnings growth rate of 4.02 so it is growing and it's growing at a reasonable rate it's not it's 10 percent exponential growth but it is growing at a reasonable rate let's take a look at the numbers first thing i'm looking at is shares outstanding and this does not look good if i'm honest 10 year shares outstanding 8.7 percent growth and five years it's been grown by six percent so most of its shares outstanding has been grown over the past five years it's really taken on a lot of diluted equity for shareholders not a great thing for investment return but it's something to just consider why they've done that revenue has been growing quite steadily over the past 10 years five years it's slowed a little bit but it is growing at that five percent sort of range in revenue and EBITDA growth is pretty good over the past 10 years it has been growing its profit which is quite interesting 12.7 percent year-on-year return on profit quite interesting let me just take a look at the percentages here on a net profit margin net profit margin over the past five years has been growing as well it's growing its actual profit margin by 3.4 percent a year so this company is definitely doing something right and it's definitely putting the money in the right places return on invested capital is an interesting one to look at as well uh, this has been declining over the past couple of years return on invested capital is a measure of the company's ability to place shareholder money and create growth from it um, that's the best way I can describe it anyway. A good benchmark for return on invested capital is 2%. If a company has a return on invested capital of less than 2%, then it's considered to be uh, damaging to shareholder wealth in that case. DS Smith has an ROIC of 5%, which is actually quite good. And in previous years, it's been as high as 8%. So it has been declining over the past five years, but th and this might be something to do with the reinvestment and the shares that they've been issuing over the past couple of years. Just for sheer comparison, Google has a return on invested capital of about 30%. So that's your top line benchmark. It's probably one of the best return on invested capitals in the world. DS Smith has eight, between eight and 5%. So it's not so bad for a company that, you know, is relatively boring and not in any sort of tech space. Total debt has been growing over the past five years. Its current debt, its current total debt is 3.5 billion. That is half of its entire market cap. Not at all a red flag in any way though, but its free cash flow is only about 350 million, which is not ideal. But let's see what the analysts think. And the analysts right now are nine analysts in 21, nine analysts in 22, eight in 23, and only one in 2024. So we basically have to discount 2024 right now. Nine analysts are predicting a 25% earnings growth in 2022 and a 17% earnings growth in 2023. And actually it's going to start paying a dividend. That's what the analysts are expecting. Uh, 2022 and 2021, so it might have already reinstated its dividend. Uh, I hadn't seen that at all. But analysts are expecting a dividend to start being paid very soon and currently have the price of DS Smith 
underrated by about 80%, which is a 24% year on year annual rate of return. That's quite a lot for a very boring packaging company. DS Smith currently has a normal PE ratio of 13. So we've got to keep that at 13. We can't expect that DS Smith is definitely going to expand to a 15 PE ratio. I'm going to keep it at a 13 PE ratio. Let's keep it like that. With a constant growth rate of 3% year on year, I think it's going to be 4%. So in a normal situation, let's get uh, it growing at about 4.5% year on year. And let's get that PE ratio to 13. So for a normal situation at about four pounds right now, DS Smith is overvalued for its current day. But if you consider all the cash flow and the earnings that are coming to it from what analysts expect and if it grows at its current growth rate of about 4.54%, we can see that by 2027, DS Smith will have a capital appreciation of 25%. And this doesn't include any dividends right now because I don't know if it is paying the dividend right now or if it's looking to start paying the dividend later in the year but that's a total annual return of 3.78 percent so a return of 25 percent on your money in five years could actually be quite a good deal however to get that 10 percent year-on-year compound return you probably want it to drop by 10 to 20 percent before really considering it or at least that's for me anyway overall though this stock does look like it's within fair value it does have growth prospects right now so there is a, something to be seen here 25% on your money is not bad. 3.2% over year on year. You know, we always have to remember that past results do not guarantee current results or future results. But DS Smith does look like a solid business. It survived the pandemic year pretty well. I don't know how much government money it took, but it didn't look like it had to take much at all. It just had to take more debt this year, like pretty much all businesses. So there's definitely a possibility here of DS Smith being a very boring business, but at a reasonable valuation. Thank you very much for watching guys and if you enjoyed this video please feel free to like subscribe and invest I'm amazed how many people own stocks I'm amazed how many people own stocks the sucker's going up